Okay, so in this next video uh, in the functional analysis, we are going to discuss the convergence of a sequence in a uh, metric space. So let's say we have some metric space x, d. So this is our set with a metric defined on it, uh, which is this distance function which you plug in an ordered pair and it will ascribe your positive real number. Well, a non-negative real number anyway. Okay, uh, so what we want to discuss is the concept of a limit uh, in a uh, metric, uh, well, the limit of a sequence in a metric space. So firstly, uh, a sequence is, um, is a map, a sequence that say x uh, is a map from the natural numbers into your set. So it ascribes to every natural number, so the natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. It ascribes to each natural number uh, a point in the sequence and this is often abbreviated uh, 1 is mapped onto x1, 2 is mapped onto x2, 3 is mapped onto x3, etc. So x will map a natural number n onto some point x which is uh, labelled with the subscript n. So uh, the intuitive picture is that you have x1, x2, x3, and they go on and on and on and on and on and they might just converge on something and get closer and closer and closer and closer to something. Uh, so, uh, the if the meaning of a limit of a sequence in a, uh, in a uh, metric space is that if the limit of a sequence xn as n approaches infinity is some, let's say, uh, let's say L for limit, uh, then that what that means is that um, for all the epsilon greater than zero, there exists a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that for all little n is greater than or equal to big N, the uh, term of the sequence x little n minus the limit, oh sorry, this is the real numbers I'm going, sorry, the distance between the term x little n and the limit is less than epsilon. So basically, what it says is that if you have some limit, let's say here is our limit L, then you give me whatever epsilon you want, construct the open ball, uh, construct the open ball uh, uh, around L. So this is the ball around L of radius epsilon, which is all points, all points x is an element of little x, uh, little x is an element of big x, such that the distance between L and x is less than epsilon. So construct the set of all points which are a distance less than epsilon from L, and basically I can find you a big N in the sequence, some big N down here, such that if little n is greater than or equal to it, so if you if you pick any term in the sequence beyond uh, big N, uh, greater than or equal to big N, so either x big N, x big N plus 1, x big n plus 2, any term after that n in the sequence, it's going to be within this ball, i.e. the distance between xn and l is going to be less than epsilon, which equivalently you could say that xn is an element of the ball, uh, center the l of radius epsilon. So basically what it says is that uh, f take any ball of whatever size, make these balls arbitrarily small, and I will always be able to find you some point in the sequence, some big N uh, point in the sequence, after which that point and all points after it are within that ball. So the sequence gets within the ball and stays within it. And that's true for arbitrarily small balls. Uh, so whatever size ball you give me, as long as the radius is greater than zero, I will be able to find you uh, a point in the sequence after which the sequence is in the ball, and for all points after that, it remains within the ball. Uh, so um, that's the definition of continue of uh, the limit of a sequence in an arbitrary metric space. So now I want to show you the an example, uh, an, a, a counterintuitive example of um, of sequences that you think are converging, but don't. It's a warning, basically. I want to give you a warning. So, warning. Okay. Let our set be, uh, let, uh, let the big set we're going to be working on be the open interval from 0 to 1, i.e. we are just interested in the points within 0 and 1. So it does not include 0 and it does not include 1. Now consider the sequence that's that x be a sequence mapping the natural numbers onto this set big X 
so this is some sequence. In fact, let's say let's call it S, uh, so that we don't confuse the X with this X up here. So some sequence is mapping the natural numbers onto X, and specifically, it's going to take some little n, which is a natural number, onto one divided by n. So, um, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's say. Uh, Let's, let's make this the closed interval at 1, otherwise this isn't going to be defined for n is equal to 1. Uh, okay, so for n is equal to 1, s1 is going to equal 1 divided by 1, so we've got this, 1 is now a point of our metric space, you have 1 here, so that's s1 there. S2 is equal to 1 divided by 2 is equal to a half, so we've got this point over here, so this is s2. S3 is equal to a third, you start to get the pattern that Sn is equal to 1 over n. So S3 is over here, we could plot S4 which is a quarter of the way along, S5 which is a fifth of the way along, and it goes on, and they converge on what? What do they appear to converge on? In the real line, this sequence would converge on zero. It's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to zero. But what's this? Zero is not an element of our metric space. So in fact, there is no element, there is no, is no element in our metric space, in our metric space, which this sequence converges on. Which this sequence converges on. I, if you take absolutely every single element, which this, I'll just come finish writing what I'm uh, sequence converges on. Okay, and this means that if you take any point, take let L be any point uh, in this interval zero to one, and basically this will not be true. It will not be true that the limit as n approaches infinity of x to the n is equal to l, i.e. it will not be true that for all epsilon greater than zero there exists uh, a big n uh, greater than zero, uh, a, well a big n is an element of natural numbers such that uh, for all little n greater than or equal to big n uh, the distance between x n and l uh, is less than epsilon. Okay, and the reason for this is if you take any number, if you let L be any number in this interval, so let L be any element of this, any element of this interval, then basically I can find you an epsilon. If I make epsilon small enough, uh, I will find you, um, I will find you, uh, basically if I make epsilon small enough, there will be terms over here, there will be terms in the sequence uh, between, uh, that are that are to the left of the interval, basically, around this L, and therefore uh, there will be no, there will not exist a big N, in, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that all the terms uh, remain uh, after that point remain in, because they'll all be over here. After some point, all of them will be not within the interval, and that will be true whatever L you take. So, for instance, if you give me an L, I can just let epsilon equal L divided by 2, and basically that'll uh, split this um, the bit between 0 and L up into 2 and basically uh, there will exist a point uh, in the sequence after which all the terms are most definitely not in the interval in the uh, ball around L of size uh, let's say L over 2 so basically uh, no L is in which is an element of this metric space uh, is the limit for that sequence so sequences which we would think converged don't necessarily converge in abstract metric spaces.